I am the North Star um, Community Navigator. Sorry, I've got a few people joining in. Um, but if you haven't heard of North Star or you're a little confused is what we're doing here. Um, North Star is a collaborative of organizations that are all focused on illuminating pathways to entrepreneurship. So each organization has their own little specialty on how we can assist an um, aspiring entrepreneur um, in following that pathway. But um, yeah, that is what we do. And so my role is to make sure that we are putting on events and engaging with the community to make sure that individuals know that entrepreneurship is a possibility. A lot of times people think of like, oh, it's just my side hustle or, oh, it is just, you know, it's something that I, I think I, I would like to do, but I'm not really sure how to be successful at it um, or maybe not so successful at it. So we're going to go through this um, event uh, with that in mind. We want to make sure everyone kind of sees what entrepreneurship may look like. Um, and how how we kind of get there. And so Joe is my uh, partner in crime here. Uh, Joe is our advisor navigator, and I'll let him kind of share a little bit about himself. Yeah, thanks, Jenna. So my role is really to support all of our ventures with that social capital piece and recruiting um, different folks that want to, you know, support and be advisors, be content developers, um, guest speakers, and I somehow was able to suck her Tony in to being our very first um, guest for our Hustle and Hang. So, Tony, thank you. Please do this again if we ask you to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, thanks for, for being with us today. And, um, you know, so everybody here, a little bit about Tony is that he is a mastermind behind Ask Tony, his venture design studio. Um, he's worked in Silicon Valley with some of the giant tech giants such as Yahoo, Credit Karma, and Firefox um, have two patents under his belt. And it's focusing on really helping and fostering entrepreneurship and helping them get the funding they need and um, launch their, their companies. Um, you know, you secured over a billion dollars in support for, you know, that's amazing. Um, so first question is, how are you? And what are you working on? Well, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked to be, uh, you know, the interview number one here. So thanks to North Star and thanks to RevHub. Uh, I'm doing good. Yeah, busy, busier than ever. Um, essentially, I, you know, own and run a creative marketing agency with a twist. And that twist is that we're highly niche. And so many creative marketing agencies do full service, anything from video to websites to apps. We only do presentation design. We only do pitch decks. Um, and then our customers are pretty hyper specific. They're founders, venture capitalists, uh, family offices, and we help them with all of their, of course, fundraising materials, decks, things like that. And then it bleeds into sales decks and, and so forth. Um, yeah, so I've been doing it about uh, three years, three and a half years. And then uh, this is my one year full time. So, you know, about a year ago, I quit my big job and and took this on full time. Wow. So, you know, one thing I've been learning is that the entrepreneur journey is different for everybody. You know, some people, it's a lot quicker. Um, maybe even a lot easier. So how did you get to this point to be able to take that leap of faith, quit your job and say, this is how I'm going to make my living? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't overnight for sure. Um, you know, I, I contribute a lot of it to just growing up in a family business. So, you know, my dad was an entrepreneur. And I think in that regard, I was a bit lucky and also cursed in a way, um, you know, seeing a family business, being a part of it, having to work for it, being on assembly lines and then into kind of sales roles and kind of seeing you know what it takes to run a business. Um, and then becoming an employee after that and having a career in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and kind of having that, you know, being a bit uncomfortable in in that type of corporate environment. Um, and so all of those things kind of just like snowballed and started, uh, you know, creating a bit of a pressure on me to always want to build something or do something. And so, um, yeah, for this, it was a long process. I've been a designer since I was in high school. And so, you know, it's I'm still a designer now. And now I'm just building a business around that creativity in a way. Um, and so, yeah, specifically with Ask Tony, uh, about three years ago, I kind of got my arm twisted by one of my old managers at at Mozilla Firefox. He became a venture partner at a great firm called Long Journey Ventures. 
and you know he wanted me to design their first deck and then that snowballed into designing all four of their decks for the last four years or so and then ultimately bleed into their portfolio companies and at that point i was super resistant i was a bit of a hot shot uh, product designer working on apps and things like that that you know powerpoints at the time is kind of how i viewed them just templates and you know things that didn't really matter ultimately you know i, I fell in love they have huge impact and as you mentioned you know they raise mm -hmm. a lot of money and for me to tie that design to business impact impact is, is what I've been chasing basically my whole life. And so it's, it's now felt like I should have been doing this uh, my whole life in a weird way. So for folks that may not know, what's a pitch deck? Yeah, so that's a good question. I think, uh, you know, it's different for everybody. It's it's kind of like a catch-all term, but uh, yeah, essentially just a, a presentation that's designed to de-risk your business and therefore get investors or qualified people to invest in your company uh, to give you money to fund it. Um, and then it's it's a catch also that also means sales decks uh, you know so if you're going to attract a buyer it's very similar you need to tell a compelling story etc and so that's what we do we basically do full end-to-end -end service uh, we do all the narrative development we do all the copywriting and then of course the design and then we do all the speaker notes inflections how to present what to say when um, and all kind of creating a full package I, I like to say we're like the iron man suit or the tailor for these founders we really are selling mm. them confidence at the end of the day you know typically we work with with businesses like Niantech, the Pokemon Go company, or Crusoe Energy. These are really successful unicorns um, that, that don't really need us, but uh, they need somebody that's going to give them the confidence to actually sell their, you know, sell or communicate in the way that they need to, to attract an audience or, you know, get some money. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a, a pitch deck that was terrible, product was good, but the pitch deck was just not communicating what it needed to? Oh, yeah. Oh, all of them. <laughs> uh, most, <laughs> most start that way. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we have a, we have a meta sales deck for ourselves. We, we have our own sales deck to sell sales decks and pitch decks. And in that we have a, a bit of a joke, um, where it's a slide that would look like what other slides, you know, other folks would design their slides and present with. And it's often white, you know, walls of words, bullets everywhere. There's no visuals. Uh, people can can read all 12 to 15 slides and still know nothing about the business. And that's typically how we start with most of our clients. And then we break it down to zero and then we build them back up into uh, a story that actually uh, will tell what they want to say. Awesome. Um, so you, you've done a lot, you have a lot of experience, but I want you to, to take a step back and think about when you first decided, I want to get into entrepreneurship. I need to create for my, for myself. What do you wish you would have known at that moment? And what advice would you give to somebody who you over here saying, I'm going to be an entrepreneur? What would, what would you tell them? Yeah, I tell them it's it's my big downfall that I've been working on my whole life, which is patience. Um, I think I've started a number of businesses, uh, from clothing lines in high school, building a brand. That that's that in itself is almost like starting a business, building a brand. It's so hard. Building a business is 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 even harder. Um, doing them at the same time, you know, is just a recipe for just a tough a tough job. Um, and so, yeah, I would just say patience. I think a lot of the business I've tried from clothing lines to a dorm cleaning business when I was here at Chapman to apps that have failed along the way, you know, two or three of them um, was just staying in the game. I think that's a big thing that you hear a lot of people that have been successful serial entrepreneurs is, you know, they stuck through it and they were persistent. I think when I started my businesses at, you know, age 12 and then, you know, all throughout my uh, 20s, etc. I just didn't stick it through, um, and 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 wasn't patient enough. And uh, I think this go around, I'm I'm taking that lesson to heart. And you know, I'm committing four years. I'm looking at Ask Tony as almost like an MBA program for myself. And and just as you would mm -hmm. commit to Chapman again and and go to study business there for four years, I'm really giving Ask Tony, you know, a four year college try, if you will. And so. I see myself as like ending sophomore year, going into junior year, sort of speak, um, and and really kind of you know the, the next two years are going to be pretty uh, you know instrumental in deciding if it's going to be a sustainable and you know growing business. Um, so you kind of talked about the the long term, the patience, right, the journey of it all. Um, how do you handle? And I don't give you an example of when this might have happened when you're gun hold one direction and you have that gut feeling saying 
I don't know if this is the right direction, you know, but to pivot may mean more time, more resources, um, maybe another pivot. Um, like, how would you handle that? Because I know, um, you know, people don't always get it on the first try. We would have loved if that was the case, but it's not. So, like, how have you handled that when, you know, you're kind of going direction A and you realize maybe you need to go in direction B? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, early on in my journey, I didn't handle it too well. And I think, um, you know, that's where a lot of that failure, you know, happened. But I think the career in tech, they kind of, uh, you get trained and practice uh, failure a lot. You get, you know, the training on on pivoting quite a bit. Your features don't work, your products don't work, and you have to, you know, sunset them is what they, is what they call it. And so um, I've sunsetted a lot of businesses in the same way. And I think, um yeah, I don't know if I figured it out totally, but um, I think it's it's just being persistent. And, you know, I think the best advice that I give now and what I've been following and how we built Ask Tony is to not pick a solution, to not pick that end idea and then have to be, you know, in those positions of constantly pivoting to actually kind of take a step back, do the research, talk to customers, mm -hmm. uh, pick a space versus a product or, a, you know, an end goal or an end business. And so for with Ask Tony, for example, I didn't pick pitch decks. Um, basically, I started interviewing all of uh, the founders that I knew in my life, all the folks that I had done freelance for in, in any capacity from working on apps or logos or branding. And I did a full research study with these founders and, and figured out what was their top priorities. And at the time, you know, we were actually building the first Ask Tony was called Ask Patrick. And it was building a chat fractional support design chat, basically texting a head of design kind of idea. And then that ultimately led to figuring out that the biggest need for these founders is fundraising and, and making sure that their pitch is right. And so it all was about kind of I knew I just wanted to be in the design space. I had worked at agencies. And so I had picked like, how do I just scale something in design, something with my, you know, talent. Um, and ultimately that led to Ask Tony. But yeah, I would say picking a space uh, and then whittling your way down, going wide and then narrowing versus narrowing, getting stuck, having to widen up again. Maybe that's not right. You know, it's just a different approach. So how would you help somebody navigate a situation where they don't know if they should pivot or if they should keep going? You know, uh, I, what, what do you think the thought process like you'd recommend to figure yeah, that out? Yeah, for, for, I think it's different for everybody. You know, you have the Steve Jobs mindset where, you know, you may never want to pivot. You may just want to brute force it until it works. And it's just going to be a longer time horizon. I think with everything that I've learned about business, it's just effort over time. And, there will be maybe these moments of breakthrough of any kind of idea if you sit there long enough and and jam on it long enough. But uh, for me, if I was in that situation, I would take the step back, talk to people, real humans in the world, hopefully their customers or maybe their potential customers. Uh, but but taking a step back out of just my passion project, my uh, my own opinions and and get some external feedback. Um, I like to say flag in the sand. It's a big thing that we we say and ask Tony, which is have an opinion, you know, put your flag in the sand and then let people tell you how far off you placed it. Um, and so I would Ooh. take that approach. You know, I would I would have an opinion. You know, I'm going to make this X, Y, Z business and then go after it and then let people tell me how far off, you know, it is from what they actually need and what they'll pay for. Got it. Um, so with people's opinion, I think that's a, a really hard, um, barrier for some, for some people when it doesn't align with your truth and, you know, what you feel is right or what you feel is, you know, the best course of action. So how do you handle disbelief? How do you handle when somebody doesn't think pitch decks are worth it? Or if somebody says, I want to do this, but everybody is telling me that I shouldn't and it's not going to work. Um, I don't know. Like to me, that's where a lot of people get stuck is, you know, the mind stops them right there. You know, have you handled that? And, and like, what did you do to overcome it? Yeah. There's a ton of funny moments, you know, a recent one too. I, I like to go to conferences now and, and uh, you know, see pitches live. It's a, it's just a fun thing I like to do. And so I went to, a conference in the Bay Area a couple months back and Y Combinator, you know, the best of the best of accelerators uh, partners were on stage. I was so excited. It was the keynote event after a whole you know week of 
uh, workshops, lectures, et cetera. And, you know, they, their advice was to never hire someone like me, you know, and, and that just took it on the chin. I was just, I was bummed to hear. Um, but then you have to take a step back and realize like, there's so much nuance in there, which is, you know, when I take a step back, I'm like, I actually agree with them. Like at their stage, what they're working with the startups they're focused on, you probably don't need someone like me. I'm at a little bit later stage, series A, series B, series C. And so I think when you kind of learn a little bit more and get into it, you can hear some of this and, you know, not let it affect you because it may not be exactly contributing to what you're doing or, or, or building. Uh, but yeah, no, it's tough to hear when, you know, your idols are like, don't ever hire someone like yourself but in the same day then i'm getting texts and emails from clients you know letting me know they secured funding and so you kind of oh. have to live in this weird balance of back and forth give and take um you're gonna have haters you're gonna have people that love your work especially in something like design where it's so subjective uh in a lot of ways there's no science really you know behind it you, you know you're gonna have haters along the way and i think that's been a practice and a journey my whole life is not everybody has always loved my work, you know, and, and uh, so it's just kind of getting comfortable in that environment. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people say like, I've never raised myself, right? And that's an interesting conversation to get around to. But I've been a part of so many companies where I've internally helped them raise. And then now, you know, we're on our almost 50th deck uh, helping folks raise and we've only had, you know, one company not be successful in that. And so you kind of just have to like, go after it and that's what i'm saying i'm in my junior entering my junior year i won't let the, let the haters affect me until after that senior year and i really prove if this is yeah. you know really working or not yeah that's awesome congratulations that's a pretty good stats Thank um you. and and i think that disbelief that what anxiety can cause is a fear of failure right if, if somebody says it's not going to work you automatically go to this is going to fail why should i do it but I believe that failure isn't always the end point or, you know, the, the thing that's going to knock you out of the game. So how has failure played a role in your success? Yeah, I think of it as just like learning, really. Um, I mean, especially when you get into tech too, which has been such just like a blessing for me to kind of learn the lessons in these big tech companies, which is like the whole point is to fail really quickly. They don't really take the next step of de defining why that, why they care about that so much, why they say fail fast so much. But to me, it's just to learn quickly. And and once again, it's like, to me, it's effort over time. And so if you can learn faster, your effort's going to be better. And then hopefully you can decrease that time horizon. You know, because every business is on this bell curve. I think what they don't tell you is like that lip of the bell curve when you first start is super deep and it's like a sacrifice you have to make. But if you can get over that, there is this growth that that just happens kind of organically. Um, and so for me, it's like chipping away at it and just, yeah, being in, in the moment each day. I, I like to have mantras 1% better every day, you know, really try to minimize it down to things that are possible. You know, you can get 1% better every day. And if you do that over four years, like what I'm trying to do, you know, that's, that's a lot of percentages, 400 plus, you know? So um, yeah, I think it just stacks. I love that. And, um, you know, before I kick it off to, to Jenna Lynn, um, we talked about failure and the hardship, but I want to talk about the moment when, your concept becomes reality. That moment when you see everything that you plan come to fruition, what does that feel like? Yeah, for me, it's like a, it's a high in itself. You know, it's it's really what I'm passionate about doing. It's what I get up every day to do is to make something. And it's it's been like that way my whole life. You know, the, the high school Tony was making that clothing line, that T-shirt, worrying about that tag and that screen print. So someone like you, Joe, would wear it and be proud and flex it, you know, and, and that's the same feeling I get when I made the dorm cleaning business and someone walked into the, the bathroom and it was clean and had a little chocolate. It's for me, it's like all about these experiences. Um, you know, I've always admired streetwear companies and these companies that can pull off these really intimate um, brand building moments. And so I've taken that into tech with features, you know, and products uh, and, and full services and now doing that same thing with uh, with pitch decks here. And so, you know, when we get new clients, we send them swag out the door. You know, like the whole part of joining Ask Tony is kind of building a community, you know, working with us and being a collaborator to then build this moment where you're a part of something that's a little bit different, uh, an agency that's doing something a little bit different. Um, and ultimately, hopefully you get the product that you're proud of and you feel like you've actually helped build it in a way. Awesome. 
sounds like it can be such a, a great feeling that it was worth it. A moment to, to, like you said, when you were on that bottom bell curve of this is terrible, why did I do this? It's like, this is why. That's yeah. awesome. And I've had a lot of practice, practice, like, you know, when I was at Yahoo, we had like a full usability lab where you could bring in a real, you know, six or seven users on a Friday and put up your prototype of your idea that, you know, maybe leadership doesn't like, or it's not on the roadmap or nobody's ever thought about it. You just get to put it in front of somebody and then they tell you if it's good or bad. And um, you get to see them mess up, get stuck, but you also get to see them unlock some new you know, automation or unlock some new value that they never had. And and those moments when they, when they say that, like the founders I work with, like Crusoe Energy, when they go and get that $500 million check and they write that email so stoked, like that makes that whole, you know, high pressure, they feel like Super Bowl moments, um, all that much worth it because you're, you're in the grind for, you know, six weeks straight. And then, you know, they come out with a, a big check. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's a high. That's awesome. All right, cool. Uh, so I'm going to jump in here with some questions. Um, so you mentioned that you've been doing this. Since, I think you said 12 <laughs> was like your first I've been designing kind of, a long time, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's amazing. Um, but you hear this, um, this expectation, like, oh, if you're an entrepreneur, you won't have any time for yourself. Like you can kiss your personal life goodbye and everything is going to be all about work. There's no balance there. So how, like for yourself, how do you balance your drive for innovation along with like self-care and kind of maintaining a healthy mindset so that you can, um, you know, kind of keep out those goals and not really get burnt out? Yeah, I would say it's something I'm I'm actively on my top to do list to figure out uh, because it I'm living an unhealthy life and I think um, you know you kind of know that going in you quit your job and you know you have no money coming in and you kind of feel these stresses and stuff but it's it's not as clear until you're in it uh, until those clients aren't you know coming in the door and nobody knows your name and and that's kind of how everybody starts you know and so um, you know I work every day you know even the weekends um, and things like that but it's all the the initial sacrifice uh, is a lot bigger. And um, as time passes, it becomes more and more like a job. And so I can say now a year full time in, you know, three and a half years total in, it feels like a full time job. Now it feels like a regular job. There's ebbs and flows. There's some days that are busier than others, but you know, I'm definitely working every day, um, working times that, you know, you may not want to work 7 a.m. and up late. You know, I'm working with a lot of international clients. And so I let them dictate my schedule for better or for worse. But, um, you yeah, know, it's tough. And I think you don't live a healthy life. But I think there's a, a hurdle. There's like a breakthrough moment. I'm crossing my fingers that happens at a certain point uh, where you get a little bit more of that time. You know, I see a lot of these rich guys out there with a lot of golfing time. So I'm hoping <laughs> there's that. I'm hoping there's that moment. At some there's point. some golf but, at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no, Got I mean, it. I think uh, forcing things like my dogs force me to get outside, right? Like there's moments that that can can break it apart. And I love spa days, if you know me well. And so uh, getting that weekly spa day in is always a must. Um, so we do things like that. And even moving to Orange County is something that only is possible because of the business, really. And and that means getting back to the Chapman community, my friends, college friends and 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 people like that, which will only, I think, help me, the business, uh, improve and get better because I'll have, you know, the real network of people that, that genuinely care. And, um, so yeah, just trying to do that, but it's work in progress for sure. Good. Um, well, I will definitely have to add one of those weekly spa days to my agenda as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, uh, you mentioned earlier that your dad was an entrepreneur, um, has he been like a mentor to you or do you have like a mentor figure um, that's been really kind of helped you out along the way, um, or that you can kind of turn to in times where you're like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Um, someone please help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think as I've gotten older, you know, we've, uh, disagreed on how businesses should be run, you know, and I think that's, that's something, uh, that, that maybe all father, son, entrepreneur, du entrepreneur duos go through, but, um, so definitely in the early days, for sure, my dad and still a huge inspiration. I mean, his business has been around 20 years, his business partner and him are now, you know, best friends, families are intertwined. It's definitely like the, the model template that I'm chasing after, you know, I want this lifestyle business. I want to be able to support other families and things like that. And so 
in that regard, it's been just like a blessing template to follow. Um, but we have difference in, in, in all aspects of business. I'm remote, distributed, he's in office, et cetera. And you can see those ties in kind of every which way from marketing to brand to product to sales. Like we just have different opinions, but um, yeah, no true mentors as, as much as I would love, just like a formal mentor, but tons of people that have come in at these nice moments and have accelerated my journey that have felt like little lucky moments. Um, my manager at, at Mozilla being one, Jonathan Bruck at, at Long Journey Ventures, really kind of getting me into this world and then, you know, you know, really trusting that I can pull it off. Um, all those things just just add up and and make you keep going. Um, but then I love just celebrities like, you know, I, I see Steph Curry as my mentor. Have I ever met him? Will I ever talk to him? No, but you know, his work ethic, his dedication, his ability to be a father, this, that, and the other on, on the, you know, uh, in the arena and off and, you know, building a media empire. Like those are the people that I study and kind of look towards, um, who are mentoring me without ever knowing it and, and probably never will. That's a good one. I would, because that actually leads me to my next question. So like, are there certain people that you follow that kind of bring that inspiration to you or, um, or just like kind of like good reads? So if there's like a blog or like a podcast that you really love listening to that really help you out, um, in kind of keeping that entrepreneur uh, momentum going, um, anything like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm a big all in podcast fan. I don't know if, if, if you all have seen them, but uh, a lot of great venture partners have come together um, to make a podcast about business investing politics. So that's a big one all in podcast. Uh, this guy, Jesse used to be a part of uh, Nelk and Full Send. Now he's making his own business called Sunday. And he does all merchandising and things like that for social you know, influencers. And so he's he's he and himself is doing all this on building and pub building in public on YouTube, you know, building this creative agency, just as I have been doing it the last few years. And so it's been fun to kind of see somebody show it out in public. And, you know, I'm kind of, you know, doing it in the background, but being able to just see, you know, where he's at and how he's progressing has been super, super interesting. And then Lots of books, um, as you can see, lots of business books, um, constantly in the business section, you know, trying to get as much information as I can. Is there a specific book that you're like, so like everyone needs to read this? Yeah, I think or there's a, a couple. Yeah, there, there's a few for sure. I mean, um, the culture map is a book that I have on my desk, you know, all the time. Uh, it was super helpful when I was at Mozilla, I had some team members that were reporting to me in Taipei and Berlin and, you know, understanding just different cultures, how to approach meetings, how to assign tasks, how to, you know, level people up, how to give feedback. Um, you know, if you mess up accidentally, that can ruin the relationship without you even knowing it. And so the culture map is a huge one that I just leverage. She does a great job of making these visual spectrums. So you can, you know, I'm a visual person, obviously, so you can kind of really see where you are in these spectrums and, you know, be able to compare and contrast so you can really prep for meetings, things like that. And then I love uh, Seth uh, Rogan. So, you know, yearbook, anything that he does, I'm a big fan of. Um, but he has a great book that's, you know, comedic stories about his rise into film and him getting his first movie. And so I take a lot of that, you know, it's not business as I see it, but it's still business in its own way and creative, you know, creativity. And so I'm just trying to glean, you know, inspiration from him and, and how he's built his little empire uh, himself. It's amazing. I I was not expecting the Seth Rogen one, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so uh, what are three things or maybe more uh, that an entrepreneur can do today to kind of improve their effectiveness, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just speaking for myself, I think. And I think it's like the commitment piece. Um, you know, I've seen myself fail many businesses just by not staying in the game, so to speak. And so that's number one. Like, I think whatever you decide to do, um, you know, and that's why I think that, you know, my advice is picking the space over the the end product, because whatever you decide to do, you should just commit to it. And so for me, I'm committing to design, right, and and trying to build a business in that arena. Um, and so that's probably the best way to, 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 to keep going. And so that's the best advice. And then balance, I think the whole journey is a roller coaster. Every day is a roller coaster. You're balancing what calls to take when how much quality to deliver versus shipping it out, you know, what customers to uh, focus on and sell to versus other. Everything is just these uh, balancing decisions that you really, 
can't know in the moment if you're making the right decision you have to just go after it and and try it out and then be able to you know recalibrate but um the whole thing is a balancing act uh, you know in every which way um so i'd say like lean into that balance and and almost design it so you you know you lean one way and dial it up this way and then you purposely dial it up the next way and you do that in a pretty quick and um efficient manner and you'll learn throughout the you know if you do that in a one week period you know you'll learn and experiment in those directions and be able to kind of actually create your own mapping and and understanding of what's happening um yeah it just depends on each business every business is different i would say i'm actually doing a pretty easy business that's still incredibly hard you know service based businesses tend to be a lot easier than building an app or a product or some kind of hardware device and so yeah it's really nuanced in that way but uh, commitment balance and then talking to real people is probably the, the best third one there. Um, not that you want to leverage what they say and you don't want to like take it and run with it per se. But once again, having the opinion, put the flag in the sand and then let them you know decide if they're going to buy or not. That's good. That last one, I think, is something that I've heard a few different times in a few different ways. So me and uh, Joe are actually talking to another entrepreneur um, and he said, um, no one wants to tell you your baby's ugly. And so kind of that making sure the real people that like want to see you kind of succeed and are willing to be real with you and tell you, okay, this is, this isn't going to work or, um, mm, this could be a little bit better. Um, those, that, that piece is really important. So very cool. And, um, and the flip side too, I just heard a story of Reddit, uh, the founder there, I guess he hand drew that little logo that's I would consider it horrible, but he, you know, everybody told him <laughs> it was horrible, but he was like, no, it's going to be the face of Reddit. I can feel it in my gut. You know, he went around all of his investors, co-founders, they all said, let's never do it. Let's never put it on the website. Or if you do put it in the footer. And he was just like, no, I'm going to do it. And now today I can't even imagine Reddit without it. And so sometimes you just have to, you, you just have a feeling and you just got to put your you know foot down and do it. That's a, I didn't realize that. I mean, it, I could see how it was hand drawn, <laughs> but my hand <laughs> drawings would definitely be way worse. Um, very cool. But so looking ahead, what would you say are like some long-term goals for yourself or like your entrepreneurial journey? Um, how would you kind of envision the um, the impact uh, that you would like to leave behind? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the surface level, I'd love to get more and more deeper into venture capital, you know, be a venture capitalist myself, raise my own fund. Um, you know, we do that in a, in a weird microscopic way now, you know, because we see the startups earlier than most, you know, we're helping them at the ground level with their pitch work. And then the inverse is true. We work with venture capitalists on their decks and we understand their thesis. We're already kind of being matchmaker when it, when it makes sense. And, you know, matching this startup with this, uh, you know, investor and, and creating kind of, uh, you know, that relationship for them. And I'd love to just keep doing that. And so the vision for Ask Tony is to, you know, become a fund ourselves, uh, build our own products, you know, but we're, that's 10 years kind of down the road. We got to figure out this, this business first and make it scalable and what, but all paths are kind of leading towards that, you know, that direction and, and something I've been wanting to do since I was at Chapman, you know, at Chapman, they had a program where they flew us up to Silicon Valley. We met with all these venture capitalists and founders. And that was the first moment that I'd kind of, you know, heard about this, you know, even space and, and this job role and things like that. And then as I myself entered the tech world, I saw how that influences products and roadmaps. And so it's, it's been kind of the back of the head game plan from the beginning. And so now I'm seeing it you know, be possible in a weird way, you know, still years out, but it seems a lot more doable. And then a big thing that I love is climate sustainability. And so even with our customers and clients, we default to that, they get a priority, uh, you know, they'll jump the queue, any, any, startups, uh, you know, doing something around climate, uh, climate tech, et cetera. And so, you know, we're working with a company called Hen right now, and they do, you know, the world's most innovative firefighter, firefighter, firefighting nozzle. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, with Maui and, and that, you know, whole sadness there, it's like those companies, we want to help get funding even more. And so I hope my legacy is, you know, more leaning into this, you know, impact tech, climate tech, 
you know, AI startups that are actually helping, you know, our planet um, get better. And so, you know, hopefully we're this VC fund with a bit of this uh, social impact good, uh, you know, in the DNA. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, hanging out with us. Uh